Hello, I'm Dominic West. I'm going to read The Big Ugly Monster and the Little Stone Rabbit by Chris Wormel, published by Red Fox. And this is for Save the Children Coronavirus Fund. So please give some money to Save the Children. Thanks. Once in a cave, there lived a big ugly monster perhaps the ugliest monster in the whole world. This is the cave. And in the picture, the monster is just about to come out. So be careful when you turn the page. There he is. Pretty ugly, eh? Just look at those nostril hairs. Of course, this is only a picture, so you're not getting the whole effect. You're not getting the ugliness at full strength. He was pretty powerful. He was so ugly that all the animals and birds ran and flew away as soon as they saw him. He was so ugly that all the flowers dropped their petals, and the trees shed their leaves, and even the grass turned brown and withered and died. He was so ugly that if he looked up at the blue sky on a sunny day, he would most likely turn grey and pour with rain, or even snow. He was so ugly that if he stepped into a pond for a swim, it would instantly dry up with a hiss of steam. That's how ugly he was. All around the monster's cave, there was not a single living thing. It was such a sad and desolate place. And you know, the monster was sad and desolate too. For though he was horrible and ugly on the outside, he wasn't on the inside. On the inside, he was lonely. He just wanted someone to talk to. But there was no one. And so he talked to the rocks. Then one day he had an idea. He began to make stone animals from the rocks. He made a fox and a badger and a deer and a bear and a tortoise and a rabbit. And they weren't very good. At least the heads weren't very good. The monster had never seen much of the real animal's heads. The back ends were better. That was the bit he usually saw as the animals ran away. And when he'd finished, the monster was pleased with all his stone animals. And he smiled. And unfortunately, the monster was so ugly that when he smiled, the stone animals cracked and shattered and he was left with a pile of rubble. All except one of the animals, that is. The stone rabbit did not crack. Perhaps the rock was stronger. I don't know why it was, but the stone rabbit did not crack. Even when the monster gave it an extra big smile, just to see it, just to test it, the stone rabbit did not crack. So the monster talked to the stone rabbit, and though the rabbit did not have much to say, the monster was happy. The monster sang to the stone rabbit, and when he sang, rocks would shatter and split for miles around. And though the rabbit never joined in, not even for the chorus, still the monster was happy. Sometimes... On nights when the moon was full, 
the monster danced, and when he danced, the ground shook like an earthquake, and great cracks split the land, and the moon dashed away and hid behind the clouds. And though the rabbit never joined in, not even to tap its foot, the monster was happy nonetheless. Sometimes the monster did tricks. He stood on one hand and juggled and did cartwheels and somersaults. And when he did his tricks, lightning flashed and thunder cracked and the wind howled like a tornado and the rain lashed down. And though the rabbit never joined in, unless you count paying statues, the monster was happy nonetheless. Years and years passed by and the monster talked and sang and danced and did his tricks. But sometimes they both just sat and watched the storms roll by. And though the monster got older and older and uglier and uglier and his hair turned grey and his teeth fell out, the stone rabbit never changed at all. A time came when the monster was so old he could no longer sing or dance or do tricks. He could still play draughts, however. And though the stone rabbit was a poor player, even when the monster suggested some very clever moves, he was happy nonetheless. But one day, the monster never came out of his cave. And the stone rabbit sat alone. And that very day, the sun came out and grass began to grow. And soon the flowers blossomed and vines scrambled over rocks and hung down over the mouth of the cave. And trees grew up straight and tall. And all the animals and birds came back. It was a beautiful place now. Perhaps the most beautiful place in the whole world. And people would go there for picnics and admire the views. And though they never took much notice of the stone rabbit, they sometimes wondered how it had got there.